You're watching Beyond 100 Days, and we're talking about the Students' Loan Act 2024, which President Bola Tinobu signed on Wednesday, 3rd of April. Joining me to talk some more about this is the Chairman, House of Representatives Committee on Student Loan, Boyega Isiaka. Thank you so much for joining us at this time. Uh, in the previous uh, law, the CBN governor had both executive and uh, management powers, you know, of Nell Fund. But now that has, you know, been restructured. So help us get, uh, you know, better understanding of that. Okay, thank you very much. Um, I mean, basically, what we had in the law that um, was effectively repealed yesterday, I mean, two days ago, rather, um, with the signing of the new law, was that... Um, the executive function was actually with the CBN governor, um, who was also given the power to appoint a secretary, not executive secretary, a secretary. And then I have other members, other uh, members, ministers, and other you know, officials. But effectively, the whole power was in the hand of the CBN governor. And we felt that, um, I mean, that was good for the CBN of yesterday that was highly interventionist in terms of um, you know, getting into what was happening. Even this CBN governor himself has said that he's not going to intervene so much. He has so much in his plate. So the new law you know, established you know, national, I mean, Nigerian Education Loan Fund, NEL Fund, um, which is a body corporate. It can, it can sue and be sued. Um, it has all the powers of a, of a, of a, of a corporation. It has a board um, and, and it has a management and there has all the powers, you know, to enter into agreement, to enter into contract, to you know, enter into what any, you know, any, any company can, can, you know, can can do. Uh, it's a body corporate, as lawyers will say. Uh, so, so that is the difference. So we now have a standalone um, company, you know, a body corporate, uh, quasi, you know, quasi private company that uh, can engage into um, giving out of loans and recovery of loans. And also managing, you know, assets and you know, um, 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 series of facilities. I mean, of loan on behalf of Nigerian students. I mean, to be given out rather I mean, to Nigerian students. So that is the major difference as far as uh, that uh, that one is concerned. Of course, there are some other differences. I've had some of it uh, when you are talking um, that have been removed. The issue of guarantee for you know for loan has also been removed. The issue of um, of um, the fact that if your parents are owing the bank, you know you you would not be entitled to has also been removed. You know um, we cannot be visiting the, the sin of parents on 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 the on the, on the students. That has also been removed. Um, the term of payments um, has also been make a lot a lot easier. You know, so we 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 now have a, a new law. That is clearly, you know, much more efficient, and we believe can deliver more better, better than than we had. So that is um, that is that is those are some of the differences. There are about one or two or, or two others, but just to address the ones you have mentioned, which is this issue of uh, of um, the CBN being in charge then and and now. The CBN All is right. now represented on the board, just like we have the. Uh, and the NIMMC, the, the data management um, um, you know, institution, also represented the board. The Ministry of Education is represented. Um, the youth is represented. Nigerian NANS is represented. Right. Another, and a few other stakeholders, MBT, ASU. So that is what we now have. And then we now have a company that is you know, headed by a, 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 an MD yet to be announced and also two executive directors. And then they will now have other officers um, All right. who are, will either be newly employed or be seconded from existing um, agencies uh, as provided in the law. All right, let's look at s some other things. And that is about the eligibility now for uh, the eligibility requirement. In the previous law, only applicants with a combined family income of less than 500,000 500, Naira per annum could apply. So in this new law now, who can apply? Any Nigerian student can apply. Uh, in this particular one, for public, is public institutions, 
And again, Nigerian student that is, um, um, you know, attending um, uh, universities, polytechnics, colleges of education, technical and vocational, you know, schools can can apply. Owned by you know, private, I mean, federal or state governments, you know, can apply. The, the funding or the Any Nigerian you know, student now has uh, any the right to apply, uh, and uh, the also the issue of um, the issue of it being um, uh, your parents. Um, I mean, getting I mean, having guarantors have also been removed. Um, what is important now is for you to give all the information about yourself, including bi biometrics and all of that. And it's an offense for you to give a false a false information. I think it's an offense punishable. With a three years imprisonment, if you give a false information about yourself. So it is believed that with all those information that you are giving, it's going to be difficult for you. Um, it will be very difficult for you, you know, to, you know, to run away or, to, I'm sorry, um, not to uh, uh, comply with what needs to be complied with in terms of, in terms of repayment. That is the belief, that is the conviction, particularly in this age of, um, of, um, of, of technology. You know, so it's going to be highly technology-based uh, and also... Um, employers are also now requested before you employ anybody. You are also now requested uh, by provision act of I think of section 29 of that act to find out the student loan status of that your would be employee, so that um, you know you can begin to make deductions from the um, from the salary up to a maximum of 10 percent of gross income, also provided in the law for you know for you to for you to. To comply with all of that, you know, so some of those, you know, inhibitions have been have been removed. Um, right. So we now have a cleaner, you know, better and more efficient um, you know, law. Right. Uh, so with we this believe. provision, of course, directors are also given the power by section six, at this subsection D or so of the law, to issue um, guidelines from time to time. I mean, all of the things that you need to do cannot be provided in the law. The guidelines will also be given from time to time um, by the, the board of directors um, of the of the of, of NEL fund um, wow. on, on the things that also need to be added. All right. So with this provision, it means that even the companies themselves would need to be in sync with the board with the with NEL fund so to ensure that whoever the employee is able to pay back if they've at any point you know taken the student loan. We hear that the sum is static. How much can each applicant get? That, those are the things that will be provided in the guidelines. The law, the, all the law says is that it covers both school fees and maintenance costs. So how much and all of those details are the things that will come up with the guide, that, that will be part of the guideline. And the guideline, by, by virtue of uh, that section that I mentioned, is taken to be part and parcel of the, of the, of the law. Um, so the, the details of for instance. If you are an university student, you're a polytechnic student, a college of education student, or technical or vocational, how much you can you can apply for, how much you can be entitled to, and all of that are things that will be given out, you know, that will be that will be contained in the guideline to be issued from time to time by the board and the management of Nell Fund when they do when you know when they are when when they are in place. I hear you. Now applicants are expected to apply through their banks with the head of the institutions signing off on it. Are you concerned this could be weaponized in cases where the applicant is not exactly in the good books of the authorities? Um, well, it's an open thing. There are sections there that, um, that also disqualify an applicant. And, uh, you know, for instance, if you are enjoying a scholarship or you are enjoying, you know, some um, grants or aids uh, from state, any state or federal government, um, you might not be entitled by provision of a particular section there. And also, if a member of a secret court confirmed by the student, by the, by the institution, if you have been involved in essential malpractices or drug, or been involved in, in drug, those are, those are the things that, um, I mean, everybody that will be involved in this you know, we assume that they are all learned, they are all exposed, they are all educated. You know, so where we're shunting, if that is, I didn't hear where, but I think that's what I heard, 
where we should think is 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 uh, alleged or is proven. I mean, it can, it can be brought up, uh, and uh, I mean, and that can be and that can be taken care of. But I think the provision is there for you as a Nigerian student. If you are not in this category of, of that, that, I mean, that can lead to disqualification. He says, so you have a right to apply. And I think there's also a provision that within a month, you know, there must be a response to you uh, through your school on the status of your application. There's also a provision for that. I can't remember the section now. Within a month of your application, you know, you are, you are, you, you will be given a response. You know, either positive or under processing, um, you know, for on the status of your application. So there are all all those provisions there, uh, which to a great extent we believe should be able to do. All right, then I've been speaking with the chairman, House of Representatives Committee on Student Loan, Boyega Isiaka. Thank you very much for this explanation about the Student Loan Act.